Now Kroger, oh, Kroger, Kroger got the right, the right hand free. He's loose with the right hand, and he starts to retaliate, and down goes Nyland, and the two of them are hammering each other. Knights of Columbus, that hurt. It's old time, my game. Enforcer of all hockey podcasts. It's the biscuit. It's the biscuit. The enforcer of all hockey podcasts. God help the fucking day if fighting's ever been. There's a country will stop working on the bat and fucking candle. Hi everybody. It's the biscuit podcast. Hey, you wanna go? Yeah, okay. Good luck, man. Let's you All right, I'm on with George Mataringas of Between the Pipes podcast. How you doing, George? Oh, pretty good. How are you? Doing awesome, man. Uh, how's that weather over there in Wisconsin? Still warm for you right now, yeah? A little bit storming right now, but uh, it's it's pretty beautiful. Uh, how's how's the podcast and everything going, bud? Uh, pretty good. We're doing our fifth episode tomorrow, and we're pretty excited about it. Hoping to get. Uh, a couple of junior, a couple people in the junior uh, leagues on our podcast in the next few episodes, so we're pretty excited about that. Hell yeah! Well, I'm excited for this, uh, George. You're taking a pretty uh, hefty load here on your shoulders, going for the quadruple. Uh, I, I appreciate you picking up the four teams here. Um, let's get it started. We're going to go. We're going to cover Nashville. We're going to cover San Jose, Tampa Bay, and Florida. Are you ready for Nashville? I'm ready. All right. So we all know, unless you were an idiot and didn't watch hockey last year, that they, the Predators, went to the Stanley Cup. They finished the season with a 41-29-12 record and really started playing their best hockey at the perfect time. Um, a lot of people had them in their preseason you know, picks to go and then got a little weary on them you know, midseason, but they pulled it together, ultimately losing to... <clears throat> A, a superior team in, in Pittsburgh. What are some of the highlights for you this offseason getting ready to start the season for Nashville coming up? Well, I think, you know, the best part about Nashville is their defense and they didn't touch what was, you know, what was good with it, but they corrected some, uh, some of the issues with it. And that was on their bottom pairing. They had uh, Alexi Emelin, who they got from uh, Las Vegas. And, you know, a lot a lot of people in Montreal didn't really like him, but that was because he was playing top two minutes with Shea Weber. On that third line, he'll get much more favorable matchups, and he's gonna, you know, he's gonna bring that physicality that he does. Oh man, that's that's uh, a beautiful that's, point. Him on the third pairing, that's gonna really open his game up. And it adds another depth. It adds more depth uh, to their PK as well. Oh, you know, sure. he's really gonna make an impact. Yeah, that that gives them really the best three pairings in all of hockey as far as defense goes. When you have, you know, Yossi. Uh, Ellis and um, you know PK, all three of them each on a line. You, you know you're doing something right there. Yeah, I mean, I I had them tied initially with Calgary after they got uh, Hamannik, but with with Emelin, I think it pushes them over the edge a bit. I, I agree. I man, that that's a good point, my man. Um, and like you said, they didn't really lose anything. You know, key. Uh, obviously, they lost Neil to Las Vegas, but uh, I don't I don't think that hurts them as much as people might think. You know, I don't think so either, just because of what I saw from Pontus Auberg, especially in the playoffs. He looks speedy, he looks quick, and he has great hands. I could, I would expect a 20-goal season from this this year. Oh, I like it. Uh, and, it, you know, it opens up, you know, um, Johansson can score a couple more goals. He wouldn't mind it. He's not going to be bummed out about that. You have – Oh, yeah. Now, with Benino signing, do you think he's going to play the third line there, or do you think he'll be on the top two line? Well, I'm actually kind of curious about this myself just because uh, they also lost Mike Fisher, who was their acting second center. And so I think that will probably put Bonito in that second that second center line. But I really like uh, Cal Yarncroft, who's on their third line. He's an extremely versatile two-way player. And I think he put up some like 30 points this season on that third pair, which is phenomenal. That's everything you want from you know a third scoring line. So I, you know, he's still only like 24, 25, so I could see him getting some time on that second, that second line if Benino looks out of, uh, you know, out of his depth. Now, do you th- I, I'm worried about Benino, play, like you said, getting out of his depth, being on that second line because he's been, you know, a, a third star with, you know, or a third line with, on the Penguins when 
when he's coming in, you know, people have already just had to worry about Afghani and Sydney, so they might have, you know, let up a little. Not that they're let up because they're professionals, but he might have been able to sneak a few more in. But I think what he does for Nashville, um, what Nick Benino does so well, is really play his best hockey when it matters. And that's something they're going to need for them to push back to to the cup and, you know, maybe make a, a run to actually win it. I think Benino will actually help that team quite a bit come playoff time. And there's no way this team, you know, unless some crazy injuries happen, that this team doesn't go back. Um, I don't have them winning their division, but I, I have them right up there at number two. You know, I, I think this is a really good team. Um, I expect big things from Arvidsson. I do worry that uh, Rene will he, – he kind of disappeared there in the cup, don't you think? Oh, he would probably would have been better if he actually just didn't show up to any of the games. Uh, that the, <laughs> Rene is my big issue for the uh, uh, for the Preds, just because they don't really have anyone to take his spot full time. Fuck no, uh, they don't. Just, they have Yusei Saros, and he's a great you know he's a great young prospect. He's only twenty one. I just don't know if he's ready to, to step in and play more than forty games this season, though. And if reason, and if, you know, I'm sorry, if Rene goes invisible like he did, then he might be asked to do so. Yeah, or yeah, or pick up more games come playoff time, and that I don't think that dude could do it. I, I literally don't think he is ready for that. So do you? No. I, I mean, if we're sitting here thinking it, and our respective homes, you they're their management has to be thinking it too. Do you think they make a move to maybe get in a, a more, a bigger name backup? I could see it. Um, the only problem is that goalies are still such a commodity in the NHL that right. good backups are rarely traded. The only, the only <clears throat> goalie that I could really see going to them in a big, in a trade might actually be James Reimer from the Panthers who we'll discuss later. Okay. All right, man. Well, what do you, what do you expect out of this season for the Predators, my man? Uh, like you said, I think it's Stanley Cup or bust for them. The uh, you know the window is open right now, and if they don't, you know if they don't capitalize while well, all these young defensemen are on good contracts, I think you know they I think they're you know they really screw it. Like I mean, because how long is Ellis going to be signed for a million dollars, and how long you know you're not going to be able to sign Ekholm for another <laughs> uh, three million dollars, and even um, uh, not Subban, but uh, Josi or Yossi is he's only signed to four point five million dollars right now for the next two years. He's going to make at least eight on the open market in that time. For sure. Uh, and like you said, it, it's got to be Stanley Cup or bust because there's, uh, Ellis isn't sticking around there for another year when he can go get you know top-line money anywhere else in the league. Oh, yeah. And you can't blame him for that because that's, that's the nature of the beast. So this is the time for the Predators to strike. And uh, the, I, fuck, the only thing left I have to say about them is – out of these new Adidas jerseys, theirs is the worst sweater I've I've out of all of them. I don't even know they did they just forget to like turn them in and then they just go here. Here's your yellow jersey with nothing on it. Well, I've never been a fan of the yellow jerseys, especially not the yellow helmets. Oh, uh, the yellow helmets yeah, make me want to bash my eyes out. <laughs> I don't even really like the the new Adidas jerseys for most of the teams. I think I saw that I liked Colorado, which is nice because that's one thing I actually like about this Colorado team now. So yeah. <laughs> the thing I liked the most out of them was the Philadelphia Flyers hat. That's as excited as I got. I was like, well, that's okay, cool, oh. I guess. <laughs> yeah. So we're uh, they got to make a run for it. Um, I don't know if they will, just because, like you had mentioned, I I do not believe in Pekarene. I didn't last season. And he turned into Pekka Rene in the in the Cup final, so I expect him to do the same. And but with that defense, they'll, they'll get pretty damn close. I I see him at least going to the the conference final for sure. Yeah, that's definitely that's that's definitely reasonable. Now, if you had to pick the three stars for this coming season for the Preds, who would you get, my man? Uh, PK Subban is going to be a big one. I mean, he had his coming out party as a shutdown defenseman and. I think you know he did the job that he was asked to do. I think this season he's going to actually get more uh, time as a you know as a more offensive defenseman. You know he's going to be let off the uh, the leash by Laviolette. I think he's going to probably put up around forty points again. I don't know if he'll finish top three in Norris, but I could see it. So he's probably I think he's probably my third star. My second star is uh, Philip Forsberg, just because. Oh yeah, I've got to you know, mention him. 
Yeah, as as that team goes, you know, as he goes, that team goes. I mean, we've seen it when he starts scoring goals and when he gets hot, the rest of the team gets hot around him. Uh, and then uh, probably Johansson. Yeah. yeah, or Johansson. I just I really like him. He's a good you know playmaking center who can he has a big body and uses it well. Uh, now, we'll see how he grows because he's still only, he's still pretty young. He's still only like twenty four years old. Now, what is the severity of his surgery he had? I had read a little bit about it, and he could have lost a limb potentially. Is he? How's he healing? And is he skating and like ready to go, or is it you know just a freak thing? And now he's a hundred percent. Do you have any idea? Well, my co-host on my other podcast, Michael Wade, is does correspondence for the uh, for the Predators, and supposedly, according to him, he's like ahead of schedule. And I don't know, I don't know why, I don't know how. You know, medicine's crazy. You know, medicine's incredible, I should say. And uh, you know, there might be some HGH going on there, but uh, you know, I, I don't know. But I think him and Fiala will be ready for the uh, for the opening for opening night. All right. Well, George, that's the Predators 2018. Um, Johansson on HGH and they're going to the cup. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, dude, let's go next into San Jose. One, one my favorite team out West. Um, I watch, you know, mostly East coast hockey just cause that's where I live. And it's a lot easier. Those fucking games that start at 10 o'clock. I got to get up at five 30. You know, I got shit to do staying up that late's hard. Um, 46, 29, seven. They don't, they either don't go to overtime that much or they just fucking don't lose in overtime. But uh, I, I was disappointed in the way that season ended for them. I thought they had all the pieces back that they needed. Um, and you ran into Connor McDavid. Yeah. Um, so first off, let me start this off by saying I'm very biased. I grew up in San Jose, California. I My home right now in San Jose is uh, is – a seven minute drive from the shark tank. I went to my first game. I was a week old. So I'm a oh, big wow. fan. I have to say it. Well, home cook them. Fuck done. it. Like this, this team, uh, last year's playoff was, a, was weird because, you know, Joe Thorne was playing without an ACL and an MCL in one leg. He's and, a freak. uh, and lone Couture, their second center was, wasn't able to eat, uh, solid food. Cause he still had that broken jaw. Ugh. And as we saw with the uh, national predators in the Stanley cup final, when you don't have your top two centers, it really hurts the team. Right. Especially when Joe Thornton, you know, is a future hall of famer and Logan Couture could probably play on some other teams first lines. Oh, I agree. Um, what I took from that playoff last year was like, you just said this, this team's dying. It's they're the sharks out of the water. It's hanging. I expected them to go back to the cup last year. I thought they would actually – I had predicted them to win it. Um, and I don't see how they're any better coming into this season than they were last year. I, I think I, – I don't think Patrick Marlowe leaving is that big of a deal. He's older than Dirt. Um, mm-hmm. Couture is going to be back. Uh, Pavelski's – I mean the core group is back. Joe signed – I don't know – a lot of that Vegas shit, like, I don't know if Joe knew he was going to be unprotected or, like, if, you know, he saw that on ESPN one morning and, you know, I don't know where he's at mentally. Because that, that would piss me off, personally. Yeah, I so – originally, I actually thought that Joe Thorne was going to go to the Maple Leafs. I hadn't heard from his agent probably before the season started, actually, that – he was kind of done with the Sharks organization due to some mismanaging and you know some rumors about the uh, some rumors about the expansion draft happening. Oh, really? Yeah, and so when I when I saw that Marlowe actually went to the Maple Leafs, I was very surprised. The only thing I, I will say that I'm really happy that the Sharks you know didn't trade didn't sign Marlowe to that three year deal because that really is a, just a stinker of a deal. <laughs> it's an abomination. I don't know what you want to call. It. It, it, it seems like the only, the only it seems like the first two years might be okay, but like that third year, what the fuck is anybody thinking paying that dude? What the I fuck? Think Hold up, one on, second. Uh, Robin Island, they're going to say he has some mystical injury that you know no one can explain or test for, and he'll sit out in his cap. You know, count against the you know, his cap won't count against the cap, I guess, or his money won't count against the cap. Right now. Did did they make any major moves to make this team better? Not besides Thornton, I, and and he he could, for all intents and purposes, be be kind of pissed off about it. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't know why he signed. This team isn't a win now team. Uh, this team is is such a mystery to me because there are a lot of really young good players on this team. I mean, uh, Melker Carlson, Chris Tierney, uh, Timo Meyer, especially. I actually had Timo Meyer uh, probably potted in at twenty to twenty five goals this season just because of how much I liked him during the regular season last year. Now you don't hear uh, much about that guy. No, you don't. I, he was. I mean, he was a top. I think he was the eleventh pick or the twelfth pick uh, last year. And he, you know, he was a great power forward for him, but you know, again, he was 19 on Peter DeBoer's team, and Peter DeBoer hates rookies. He, he, did, <laughs> you know, he hated rookies in New Jersey, and he hated rookies when he was the coach of the Panthers. So <laughs> that's what's going to happen. I, I I don't want to say it, but I have to. I do they miss the playoffs? Oh, boy, I I don't think they missed the playoffs by much, but they missed the playoffs. I think they're I think they're going to hang right in there, and then at when it matters, you know, it, I just don't see them. Ha- and, and I think the West got exceptionally better um, this mm-hmm. offseason. I think a lot of teams made themselves better and more competitive, and uh, and unfortunately for the Sharks, I see them falling on the wayside with the Kings, and not as bad as the Kings. I think the Kings are fucking pure shit. Uh, yeah, but the, yeah. the the sharks may, might be right there, but they're not they're not better than Edmonton. You know, they're they're not better than you know a lot of the teams that they're going to have to be better than. Yeah, I think Edmonton. You know, Anaheim. I actually see Anaheim coming out of uh, the Pacific on top. I really like what they are as a team. As much as it pains me to say it, because I hate Anaheim, but they still look good. The only issue for them is Corey Perry. Well, I, they have a couple issues, but I don't want to get too much into the Ducks. I see Edmonton not far behind them, and then I see Calgary in that number three spot, especially with the additions that they made in the season. In the post, I'm sorry, the off season. Dude, I I like Calgary, man. I I think uh, I think you're right, man. Um, And then with the Ducks, they're almost in that. We like you said, we don't want to talk too much about the Ducks, but they're almost on that go to the cup or you know, fuck off, let's burn this team down. You know, those guys aren't getting any younger. Yeah, especially with Corey Perry and his atrocious skating. Yeah. <laughs> that's not a Sharks fan talking at all, is it? <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's pure and unbiased. <laughs> well, so I, I think we agree there that they, they get close. And, you know, if they do make it in, it's going to be a wild card spot. Um, can you – are there three stars on this team? Yes, I, I believe there are. Okay, let me um, get them. Number three is going to be Joe Thorne, just because it's going to be the farewell season. I don't think he comes comes in after. I don't think he comes back after this one like for any team. I think he retires, and he deserves all the praise he gets. Yes, he does. Uh, number two, I have uh, Timo Meyer because I think it's going to be a big coming out party for him. You've got I me. Also, you've got me excited about him this season now. Yeah, yeah, I really like him, especially if he gets playing time with uh, Tomas Hurdle when he plays center. Mm-hmm. I think that those two can be good. Uh, but then number one is going to be uh, Mark Edward Vlasic, just because in my very biased and you know statistically unbiased opinion, I think he's the best shutdown defenseman the league has seen in a you know probably since maybe Nick Lindstrom. And again, pure bias there, but <laughs> now I just I love love Vlasic. He's one of the one of the gentlemen from the league that said you know he put up that uh, Canadian flag or the Olympic sign you know when they said they're not going to send the players. Do you think he would be bold enough to go play for Canada if, um, as if it stands the way it is now, and the NHL doesn't allow the players to go play? Uh, Vlasic? Yeah. No, no Canadians going to go. I mean, Sidney Crosby said that he wanted to go to the Olympics, and you think he's going to go? Fuck, he's the only player that can no. go without consequence. Yeah, like, he, if he went, there'd be. I mean, everyone else would follow, but he's not going to. No. And the, yeah, the NHL can't do shit to Crosby, but they could they could punish Vlasic in a in a real way. They could punish pretty much any other player in a real way for going. So I would see uh, them. You know, Ovechkin they probably won't punish either. Just but I mean, maybe they do hate Russians. But if yeah. like if Vlasic went, I could see them not you know banning him for the rest of the season. Yeah, I I don't know how harsh it would be just because the NHL's never really. You know, been faced with a situation like that, but I could definitely see them going overly harsh, just yeah. to, you know, just as a warning to people. Yep. But it wouldn't affect the Sharks' chances anyway. They would, it just means that they finished, you know, fifteen points out of a playoff spot rather than like five. Well, that, that's awesome, man. Uh, yeah. And that's three stars you probably wouldn't hear from a lot of people. So that's really good insight because you ask any, you know, Joe Blow that Brett Burns is getting mentioned in those three stars, you know. So that's a 
That's a good insight, man. That's why I'm glad to have you on. Yeah. And then, oh, I also think that we should trade Joe Thorne, but that's or not Joe Thorne, sorry, Brent Burns. That's just my personal opinion. But uh, we can why you not have to talk about that if you don't want to. Why not move him now? Why not? Oh, I say, I say, move him right now. I didn't move him yesterday. You know, Dave. I heard the rumor that David Pasternak's going to get traded, and I think Don Sweeney's stupid enough to actually make that trade. So. <laughs> I, I would. Boston's going to make that trade. I was reading that too, and then it showed the list of like. You know, Phil Kessel, fucking Joe Thornton, Tyler Sagan, all these other, like, young 21-year-old studs getting traded from Boston. Like, oh, what the fuck? Let's, well, let's just, you know, trade Pasternak. Why not? Why not trade for Brett Burns? Fuck yeah. I mean, because, oh, you know, they're doing this to shore up their defense. I mean, that's what they're going for. Even though they have Charlie McAvoy and uh, Brandon Carlo, I just – if I if, if the Sharks had a 20 – you know, had a 21-year-old that scored 70 points, I – yeah, you know, I would drive him everywhere he went. I would do everything I could to keep him in San Jose. Yeah, uh, it's you know, especially if I was GM. I mean, that's just coming from a fan. Oh yeah, I'd be from, from a GM. If you wanted I me just, to suck his toes, I'd be sucking his toes. Like whatever yeah. you want, bud. Oh yeah. Well, if I was a GM for a player like that, I'd just hand him a check and say, "Please don't, you know, or be gentle." You know, <laughs> <just>. <laughs> uh, I I could see. I would like to see. Um, Pastor and I go to Detroit for one of their goaltenders, uh, just because I think I think Tuca's fucking done. I think with his groin surgery and his age and his face, I think he's done. And it wouldn't hurt to have a Mrazic or a Jimmy Howard back there. But if you could get Brett Burns, I could see Boston doing that in a heartbeat. That would be fucking. That'd be up there with blockbuster, like you know Shea Weber and PK when that went down. That I mean, that would kind of shake like that. That's a crazy trade. I mean, yeah, I would, I would die happy just because Brent Burns. I, I, I love Brent Burns. I think he's a great, I think he's a great player. I don't think he's a great defenseman per se. I think he scores a lot of points, but that's not, all, that's not everything that a defenseman does. I'm uh, under the school of. I, I don't even think he thinks he's a defenseman. No, he's a rover. He's he's you know he's an independent guy out there. Right. Uh, and Boston has some other young forwards that they'll probably end up trading, you know, after Pastor Neck. You know, uh, I, I would call old uh, – what's his dick from Notre Dame? Anders Bjork. He'll be the next to go because he's going to be a stud too. Oh, I'm not terribly familiar with college hockey, but yeah, I've, I've heard about him and he sounds incredible. Yeah, I'm a, I'm bummed out he, he's on Boston because I'm a big Notre Dame fan and uh, not the biggest Bruins fan. But we're not here to talk about the Bruins, Georgie. We're here to talk about the Tampa Bay fucking lightning now. The biggest disappointment of last season for me was Tampa yeah. Bay. What the fuck happened? I mean, they were all in the hospital. That's what <laughs> happened, right? 42, 30, and 10. Stamkos is hurt. Wait, wait, they went they went forty two, thirty and ten without Stamkos and like half their half their team. Right. That's incredible. Right. I mean, and that's something that you you have to give them credit for because their whole team was fucking hurt. Yeah. Constantly. It was it was just Victor Hedman and Nikita Kucherov out there for a while. How good is Nikita Kucherov? Mm. Especially to that like four million dollar deal that Eiserman signed him through for like three years. Oh Dude. Are you kidding me? Dude, is he the best GM? I th- you know he's up there. He's got to be top top three. Okay. Measurement is oh, he's so good. I think uh, I think if Tampa Bay does what they can, if everyone stays healthy, but, you'll you'll see him get the uh, GM or whatever the fuck it's called trophy at the end of the season. Yeah, I mean you know what the real GM of the year award is called, right? What it's, it's called the Stanley Cup. That's, you know, <laughs> best coaching award. It's called the Stanley Cup. Uh, I like that, dude. That's rich. That's fucking sweet. Oh man. Uh, so Tampa Bay. Should be really good, but I'm still not sold on it just because they haven't stayed healthy, and I am not a Vlaskaleski fan. Just tell me why I should. He's be. super unproven. You know, he's super unproven. That's that issue, but he's shown so much potential during like that like two month period where Bishop was gone and he played like all but three games. He posted like a 940 save percentage to keep them in the playoff run. That's the only reason why I'm like he could work out for this team, just because he has shown that he can be an elite goaltender. But of course, you know, no one can sustain a nine forty save percentage. I think he'll probably drop down. Like his career average is like nine twenty, 
nine twenty like two. Okay. But if you can even keep that up on a very mm. you know well stocked Tampa Bay team that's healthy, I think that's enough to you know put them in the top three in the Atlantic. I uh, if they stay healthy, I could see them getting top three. Um, I think. Uh, I, I don't I don't think Ottawa's a top three team. I I didn't think that last year either, and they I mean they ended up being, but I I just don't see how they're that fucking good. And I think people are gonna be a little more fed up with that system this year and kind of hit them a little more harder um, and not let them get into their game where they're so successful. But Tampa Bay, to me, if if this goalie is what you know Stevie Y you know has seen and why they wanted him and took you know went with the younger kid and got rid of Bishop. Um, and then built this team now, building it around Nikita Kucherov for all intents and purposes. You lose Drewan. Who do you bring in to to fix Drewan? Um, to fix that whole, I think they're kind of hoping that a full season of Andre Palat and uh, bringing up uh, Vladimir uh, Namastinkinov. Yeah, I was thinking of some, it's some Russian, <laughs> I, some Russian fucker. I can't tell, but he's close. I like not, not I like that. Not yeah. I've, I've watched him for like the past two years and he's been forced to play in like, like third line role because, you know, Duran was objectively better. And then Killorn was on that, you know, great season with, uh, Sam coast mm. and, you know, Pollot was on that triplets line. There was Kucherov, but I think, uh, he could be a top six player. Uh, and I'm thinking of. I think he has the potential to put in, you know, thirty to forty points and be a very responsible defensive leader. Um, I think that's who they put in. I when I first saw it, I didn't like the Duran trade for Tampa, but I did a little watching. You know, I did I watched some film and I really like Mikhail Sergachev. Really? I, he looks incredible. He, he looks NHL ready in my opinion. We'll see if he plays a bunch, but holy smokes, this guy could be Shea Weber light. Oh shit! Now, yeah, when I saw yeah. that trade, I was just like, "Oh, f- I f- oh fuck!" I, d- I didn't see Drew M moving um, after he played as well as he did last year, and it seemed like all his you know bitch diva stuff calmed down. Um, but I I, I like Drew M go- going to Canada too. Uh, I I think he'll fit up fit in better up there. And I don't like I said I don't know uh, the kid that they got for him, but uh, I guess we'll see what happens with him. Um, what other key moves did you see for Tampa Bay this year? Uh, so they brought back Johnson. They brought back uh, Pollard. Very team friendly deals. Johnson, their second center, is making less than six million a year, which is fantastic. He's a lock to put in fifty points if he can stay healthy. Uh, the other thing that they're doing is they're letting uh, Braden Point, their second, you know, and sometimes first line center from last year, who was a rookie, uh, they're going to let him play third and power play. Third line minutes and power play time, and I think he's going to do very well. Um, he's only 22, so who knows? You know, he, he might have a sophomore slump, but you know, if he has a sophomore slump on the third line, no one's really going to notice that much. Yeah. And then also bringing in Kunitz, you know, he's not an impact player anymore, and he was kind of a product of Gretzky, for, or not Gretzky, I'm sorry, but Crosby for the last you know seven or eight years or whatever, but. If you put him on that third or fourth line, he'll add a little bit of scoring touch. We saw he can still score big goals, especially in that Ottawa series. Fuck yeah, he can, man. He still got it. Uh, and Kunis is kind of that, you know, you'll forget he's on the ice, and then, fuck, dude just scored. Yeah, it's it's incredible. Because, I again, I've never, I've never really seen him be that great. I've always kind of considered him to be more of a second-line guy. And, you know, sometimes with Crosby, you know, he just starts lighting it up. He's out, you know, coming out of nowhere. I think it was like maybe three or four years ago. Uh, my co-host Big Ran was getting into fantasy hockey, and he's a Penguins fan. And he, you know, just picked Kunitz, and then that that whatever year it was, he ended up having a fucking huge season, and he got him like you know bottom of the barrel. Fucking nobody wanted him, and ever since every time I like hear the dude's name now, I'm just like that's the fucking cocksucker that. Got big random fucking trophy in fantasy hockey. Is this... And now he's a, you know, multi Stanley Cup champion. And that kind of winning attitude can help around a team of dudes that haven't won. Well, especially a team that's been there but hasn't won. Right. You know, with Stamkos and Kucherov and all of them. He can kind of come in and maybe put them over the hump. I did want to go back real quick and talk about Eiserman. Fuck yeah. How, 
how fucking smart was it to let Druan play out of his diva phase? Dude. Just to kind of not trade him when his value was low, but let him rebuild it and then trade him for a top prospect. That was That's so smart. That is so incredible. He might be like the greatest like, – he's not, not a villain type, but like the way he runs shit, he's just like – Stevie Y probably pulled Drew in and went, okay, don't fucking play. I'll send you the AHL. You can sit there. I don't give a fuck, dude. It co- he, he, you know, he grows up a little bit. Stevie Y doesn't break. He comes back in, plays fucking great, plays great in the playoffs then, and then, and then, then deals him off. It was just such a smart move to not, you know, panic. Because every other gym in the NHL would have, you know, hit Pan- the panic yeah, button oh, and yeah. sent every, him off for, for peanuts. Every single... Every single other GM would have fucking dealt him right then and been or gave him what he wanted, you know, would have been and been like, oh, OK, I'm sorry. You know, they would have had this fucking PC attitude about him. Like, well, he's not happy here. We should, you know, accommodate yeah. him. Stevie was like, dude, fuck you. This is my team, dude. Well, especially it was especially a move with John Cooper, too, to just kind of, you know, keep the system going that he has there and not, you know, not bend to one player's demands. Like you said, it was just a great move by upper management and upper management does dictate how teams go i mean the players players play the game and they win the games but players wouldn't be there without that upper management and they're going to play better for upper management that they enjoy too i I mean if if a room's not happy they still might i mean all of them are professional caliber hockey players but if they don't want to go fucking win they're not going to yeah They'll, they'll just say fuck it and get paid i mean that that absolutely happens yeah that's what um i don't know if you saw but kucherov did, a, did an interview with a Russian newspaper and supposedly he said some guys got their money and then it like wildly hinted that it was uh Kalorn that just got his money and then stopped trying. I don't, I don't know if there's any truth to it. That's just what he said in a Russian newspaper. So Ooh. yeah, it's hot. Ooh. Yeah. Holy shit. Dropping nuggets all over this fucking podcast, man. <laughs> <laughs> so Tampa Bay is, 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 is can Stamco stay healthy at this point? I think he can. I think there's enough, you know, HGH in the world and enough modern, modern medicine. That, <laughs> you know, I think he can do it. I have faith. Who isn't on HGH in the NHL now? Uh, Ken Griffey Jr. I don't. I don't know. I, <laughs> Everybody's drugging. Well, dude, we're going to fucking see some good hockey though, because when those dudes in baseball were taking HGH, they were ripping them. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. So Stamco stays healthy. If if you say that, I'm going to believe you. They definitely get a top three spot. There's no way they don't. Yeah. The only other team I could see beating them or beating them out might or, or for like that top spot, I might be the Montreal Canadiens just because Carey Price or can, how long if, can Carey Price Matthews be that football. entire team? How long is him? how long is Carey Price going to have to be that entire team? Until he retires, I, <laughs> I, again, they, it comes down to their front office. He, their, their front office is hot garbage. I like the Duran trade, but if you take a look at their wing depth, it doesn't really make any sense. He's, you know, Duran is a for all intents and purposes, he is a top line winger and he's a top line skill. Yeah. But he plays on he plays on that left side almost exclusively, and that's the side that Max Pacioretty plays on. And you know, are you going to start Duran over Pacioretty? Are you going to force one of them to play to their offside? You know, their wrong sides. I, I, I don't know. No, you're going to put they, him on the second line, and then he's going to start turning into Duran again. Yeah, exactly. And uh, there's also, you know, they really. I think they, what they want to do was sign a center. And from what I've heard, they might turn Duran into a center, which would be a terrible mistake, in my opinion, because he he's never had any experience playing center, going back to his days with the. Uh, with the Halifax Mooseheads, he never played center. He was the winger that played on McKinnon's line. Dude, he does I, not seem like the kind of teammate that would like to play center. There's too much that comes with that position for him to want to dish the puck off and run, you know, an offense like that. I don't. I don't think he could do it. Yeah, I don't think he has the two way prowess to do it as well. Uh, and the, the worst part is, is I feel like Montreal has a real first line center with Galchenyuk, but they refuse to play him at center, and they just continue to put him at wing and. It's you know both the player and the front office hate each other, and it's a, probably going to be a situation like Duran, but Galchenyuk just kind of played it out. So it, with so Carey Price is either going to get first, second, or third, and with him being healthy, that's what he does. Yeah, he's they're going to the playoffs. They're going to be in that spot. Uh, also, because the 
uh, Atlantic is a little top heavy and a little weak in, in the bottom. You know, I don't, yeah. I, I don't much care for the, uh, the Florida Panthers, the Buffalo Sabres, or the Boston Bruins. Yeah, I was, was going to say the team we're about to talk of next is one of my least favorite teams. I, not because I hate them, because I I think they're turning into a pile of shit. Yeah, yeah. So and, and, well, I, 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 don't, I don't for, think I don't think Boston is going to make much of a run either. Well, there's two players that can score in that team, and that's Marshawn and uh, and Pasternak. And if you trade one of them away, what are you going to do? Right, right, right. And I think uh, I'm. I had Farmer Rob want to talk about the Maple Leafs. He thinks they're going to get second. I agreed with him. I'm taking it back. I don't. I'm worried about the Maple Leafs. I I think them boys are going to turn into boys. Matthews is going to have to play all the top line minutes now. I think I think they'll be close, but I think they're they're going to turn into 19 year olds. Yeah, the big thing that. The, you know, here's a reason why I don't think they'll make the playoffs, and that's because last year they were pretty much untouched by injury. Mitch Marner had, you know, missed like five games or six games, but realistic, but all their big players played, you know, played in every single game of the season. Yeah, uh, and they're, it's just going to happen. They're going to get injured. Marner, or Matthews, yep. or Nylander is going to take, you know, he's going to fall down awkwardly, or he's going to get hit weird, and he's going to miss twenty to thirty games, and that's going to that's going to hurt their depth. One of the reasons why I think they will make the playoffs, though, is that Mike Babcock is, in my, he's a fucking, in my opinion, the, the best coach. He's I a fucking he's, freak, and I, yeah, I, I think terrible. he, I think he works well with a, a young team like this because I've heard tale of him being a, a huge dick, hmm. and a young kid will be more prone to be like, "Oh, this is this is how the pros work." I'm in the NHL now. Be like, oh, here we go. Better listen to dad. Where another dude would just be like, dude, fuck you. Like, fuck you, Bat. But Babcock, he's Stanley Cup champion, dude, also. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, Red Wings, or I guess, you know, NHL famed head coach, probably best head coach of all time, uh, uh, Stan Bowman. He won cups wherever he went. We can all agree that he was an amazing coach. Yes. One of, one of his players once said about him, you hate him 364 days out of the year. In, but then on that 365th, you whip, you lift the cup. Yeah, you yeah exactly, dude. I've, I've so, heard that quote. That's badass. Yeah, I could. I very much see that happening with Babcock. And but you know, if he grooms these young players, you know, these young core players, you know, the old players that hate him, they are kind of they're they're expendable, right? Realistically, right. So if you can foster these young know, these young great players like Marner, Nylander, and Matthews in this culture, you know, where all they know is Babcock. You know, they'll, they'll buy in hard because that's all they know. And Babcock, you know, that's that's his job, man. He's not going anywhere, you know. The, the, oh, next, yeah. the next move he makes is retirement. So he's telling these boys, too, like, here we go. You guys listen to me. We can fucking win a cup. Let's do this shit, you know. Uh, yeah. yeah. No, you're right. And it, it also, you know, you mentioned that, you know, Stan Bowman, the same thing with Herb Brooks. Last time we won gold medal in the Olympics, uh, he straight up told the fucking guys, you're not going to like me, but we're going to win. Do you guys like winning? You know, I'm not here yeah. to be your friend. I'm here to fucking turn you into champions. Um, and I don't, I don't mind that at all. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I'd rather win than be liked. But Come to think of it, the, I think the coaches I learned from the most and respected the most were the biggest dicks out there. The ones that are friends with you, you're just like, ah, oh, dude, that's fucking Coach P. He's cool. You know, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So Panthers are going to get one or two. Definitely one, two, or three. Can they make a run? The Panthers or the 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 Lightning? I'm sorry. The Lightning. Yeah. Um, Lightning. If everyone stays healthy, I think they will. We forget. Uh, Stamkos played uh, 18 games last year and scored nine goals and like 13 assists. The, the guy's. We forget he's a top five setter in the league, and he has a shot like a fucking cannon. He's a he fucking video game, dude. He's a fucking video game. The way he makes shit look out on the ice, you're just like, well, that's not real. That's way too smooth. I remember. I think the best case of it was, or the best example of it was, uh, two years ago or three years ago in the playoffs. Uh, the Lightning were playing Montreal in the first round, and Stamkos had taken like a broken collarbone. And his first game back was game one, and on his like third shift, halfway through the first period. 
he just comes flying down the ice, skates by three guys, and just rifles one over Carey Price. <laughs> and, like, it was nothing. It was like, oh, he's back. That's yeah, that's fantastic. And it was over Carey Price, exactly. Who doesn't yeah. believe in the puck going in that fucking net? Well, yeah, and he scored it from like top of the circles. It was just a wrist shot. He just put a lot of power on it. <laughs> Well, uh, so what what can they do in the playoffs? Can they get to the conference final? Can they get out of the Atlantic if they win and if they get in there? Uh, they definitely get out of the Atlantic uh, unless Carey Price goes God mode. The only problem is Carey Price is overworked. If Carey Price didn't play seventy games a year, sixty games a year, he might be a little bit more well rested and better for the playoffs. But, I gotta, I know, gotta the, fucking say, I love. The, the Canadians, because it always seems like every time they play the Blue Jackets, who are my favorite team, they always fucking play their backup goalie, and we'll just score like 12 goals on them. It's fucking beautiful. So if Habs, fan, or Habs coaches, if you're listening, keep playing fucking Montoya. That is awesome game plan. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I don't know if they get through the Metro, though, just because the Metro is so good. Uh, I, you know, the Penguins, the Capitals, Blue Jackets seem to be making a resurgence. It's it's gonna be tough, but I think the Lightning could make it to the conference finals and even could surprise a team and get to the Stanley Cup finals. It just depends who they play in the West. I think anything less than a, a conference final appearance is a disappointment for this team. Yeah, I agree, and I, I think that's the way they're thinking. And uh, the only the only variable is the, their health. If they're healthy and you know, I don't. I don't see that. I like you said. I don't see them getting out of the metro, but I see them going there, a hundred percent. And I wouldn't be surprised if it went seven. Because, say it is Pittsburgh, they end up meeting there. It's fucking hard to go to the Stanley Cup three years in a row. Yeah, well, that'd be a fun series, though. You know, that would very fast, yeah, very high scoring teams. It would be the Bettman would fucking start finding out new ways to come if that happened yeah. <laughs> that's for sure oh yeah <laughs> uh, that's a revenue dream <laughs> oh fuck we're on to the stinkers dude florida yeah. panthers ran by a computer no yager so i don't even have an I, i'd love keith yandel um so he's about my only interest in the team now um martian salt's gone Fucking! I was super bummed out how dirty Gallant got it. Uh, I, I, I still think Las Vegas is getting a hell of a coach with him, even though they're they traded everybody they picked in the expansion pick. But the Panthers are one of these new teams that are going on. Uh, you know, from what I've read, running this team on statistics, and it seems like it's running them like a team in Florida, like they've never seen snow or ice or played outside before. Well, it's just so strange because, you know, talking about you know, statistics or stats and all that, you have teams like Florida, which are just terrible, and you have teams like Arizona, which are terrible, but might be getting a little bit better. And then you have teams like Montreal, or not Montreal, but Toronto, where Kyle Dubas uh, started off as a blogger. You know, he was running sports uh, analytics with stats, and he's now their GM in, you know, in waiting, apparently. <laughs> and Tampa Bay supposedly has their own advanced statistics that they keep. Because that's why they hired Dan Girardi, which was a terrible move. But that's a different. That's a different reason. Uh, that's a different topic. Florida Panthers are a weird team because they just have. They're, they're not grounded. There's you know. There's nothing cementing them to the earth. Their ownership is weird. They throw them a lot of money, and then you know a year later they ask them. You know, they tell them to shed cap. Their GM was a coach, and then the coach became. And then the GM became the coach, and then <laughs> the old GM became the real GM again. It's a shit show. It's yeah, it makes no sense. And I like Dale Talon a lot. Uh, you know, he built the Chicago Stanley, he built those uh, Chicago Blackhawks teams into Stanley Cup contenders. But he's, you know, he hasn't been able to kind of really fulfill his or finish his, you know, picture. I guess you call it with with Florida because there's a lot of good pieces there. Uh, Alexander Barkov is a great two way center. He, yes. He's only 21 years old. Yes. Jonathan Huberdo is a great uh, skilled winger. He's or, a fuck. He, was a, he, was, you know, he was a center, but they turned him into a winger, which was an interesting move for me. Uh, and then my favorite all is Aaron Eckblad, yeah. who is you know six five, two hundred thirty pounds. He's 20 years old that has a full beard. Scored like 30 points this season. You know, real. Tough, dude. Tough kid. When you read off those dudes, that sounds like a fucking good hockey team. What the fuck's going on? Well, do you? I mean, and, uh, this is a real question. Do you think that if you put, if you took away, uh, let's say, 
let's say I'm like the 2009 Stanley Cup team or the 2010 uh, Chicago Blackhawks Stanley Cup team. If you took away Kane and Taze and Keith and you put in those three, do you think they would win the Cup or at least come close? Because I think they would come close. I think that is a winning core. It, it's it, When you just read those off, I was like, holy shit, why are they so bad? Because that, that's it. That's the, that's the only part of the team. Like, <laughs> you know, like, and they, that's the other thing. They had good players. Like, March or so and uh, Riley Smith was another noticeable yeah. uh, trade. Uh, those two combined for 88 points. And then I think Yager was like 46 points, too. So and sold a shit ton of jerseys. Yeah, I, 130 points are missing. Right? Uh, yeah. And Luongo can't be your goalie. No, not anymore. Um, he can't. He can't. Uh, he, he can't. He's thirty nine. Yeah, he's too old. And that's the thing. Uh, James Reimer is like twenty seven, right behind him. And I, I like James Reimer. He's been inconsistent. Granted, a lot of his, you know, a lot of his portfolio was with that with it, with with those really bad Maple Leafs teams. But yeah, I still like him. I think, and I think he'll get traded too, just because <laughs> someone will offer a first form, and they'll, you know, the Panthers will take it. But I agree. I don't think that. So that's that's where the Reimer came up in the Predators talk earlier. Yeah, man, yeah. that'd be a fucking good trade. Oh, he'd, it'd be great, especially around the uh, trade deadline. You know, yes. give uh, Rene or Saros just some time off so that they don't have, they can come in fresh or even start Reimer. You know, fresh in the playoffs. Even even that, I think if Rene had a little bit of fire lit under his ass, knowing that Reimer could be a little more competitive for that spot, not necessarily. You know, I'm going to be the starter, but at least be like, oh shit, if I fuck up, that dude coming off the bench, you know, he might not let up the net. He might just keep it. Yeah. I. It's tough because, you know, some goalies, you don't don't always respond well to a fire being let into the ass. And, you know, sometimes you want goalies to just think about the playoffs and not think about, you know, the backup right. that will replace them if they slip up. But I think Rene would have been a better goalie if he had known. Or at least in the play, in those, those finals would have been a better player if you'd known that Saros starts a game. I still think Saros should have started game six. I think I, I think he should have started a game in there. There should have been one where they like, okay, Renee, enough's enough, dude. He was in. He played okay at home, but when he was in Pittsburgh, he was dog shit. Yeah, he should have showed up to the games. That's, that's it was all to really say about it. He was bad. It was it, it was it was so fucking bad. It, it made the games worse. Like it, it, it didn't look like a goalie that deserved to be in that net. And he, he I've always, have, you know, dogged him, thinking because everything you read about him, he's an elite goalie. He's this. He's that. And I, I just don't fucking see it. And then the playoffs come and he starts, you know, tearing it up. And I was like, oh shit. Well, maybe I'm a fucking asshole. And then the cup, you know, the final starts, and I'm like, oh okay, all right. Here, here's this fucking pussy I know. Here he is. And yeah. he, he got, like, butt hurt about it. Like, dude, just stop the fucking – stop the puck. Yeah. Uh, and it's not like he didn't have an all-star defense in front of him, but – Dude, he has one of the best defenses in the fucking league in front of him. <laughs> like, yeah. come on now. Yeah. You got uh, – uh, yeah, dude, he's fucking yeah, – he's something there's, else. There's nothing to defend about him. I think – uh, he's on the. If I remember correctly about Rene, uh, he's only on the books for like one more year, so I don't see him getting resigned. No, I mean, yeah, that's that's just from what I've heard. No, 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 you can't let him yeah. go. Let him go out to L.A. or something. Yeah, <laughs> dude, be Jonathan Quick's backup or <laughs> halfway starter. I don't know. Right uh, before we close. before we go any further into Florida Panthers, I didn't I didn't ask you your three stars for the Tampa Bay Lightning. Oh, shit. What's that? Uh, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. I, my third one, I think, is going to be, uh, is actually going to be a lesser known player. Uh, Slater, Coop, Coop. Uh, his last that can't, name is That can't be a real last name. Oh, oh his last name is spelled uh, K-O-E-K-O-E-K. <laughs> Coop, Coop. Yeah, no. He's put up astounding numbers in the AHL. He's he was like a third round pick from like 2013, so he's only like 22. He played like 30 games last year in the NHL, so I think he's you know he looks ready for the NHL, and he's gonna be. I think him and Sergachev are gonna fill out that either that bottom pair or 
Coop Cook is going to play on that second pair alongside like Braden Coburn or uh, yeah, Braden, probably Braden Coburn or maybe Andre uh, Schuster. But Schuster, man, man. I, I, it's just I really like I really like Coop Cook. I've just from what I've seen, he's very skilled at moving the puck. He makes he always makes the first pass really well. And one of the one of the things that I've when I've watched him, one of the phrases I've liked is that he doesn't always make the right play, but he makes the best play. Okay. You know, he, he always he always does the you know the best thing to do. Whether he's really good at establishing when he wants to just you know when it's the right time to just chip the puck out or make that first pass. I I, I like Coop Cooper third. Who's your second star, bud? Uh, second star is going to be Nikita Kucherov because he is Nikita Kucherov, and <laughs> not enough said on that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's he's he's the man. He's and a beast. The first star I have, and. I think the Norris winner for this year is going to be uh, Victor Hedman. Oh, I, he was just an absolute force on defense. Big guy, six seven, like two hundred and ten pounds. So he's is he a little fucking bit light. six seven for real? Yeah, he's huge. Holy he's shit! A, he's a big kid, and he does use his you know big kid. He's like twenty seven. He does use his body fairly well. He's you know the thing that I like about him is he just he quarterbacks that power play so well i think he had like 50 points last year when everyone else was injured he played like 30 minutes a night i think he is the real deal and i think this season he proves it proves it for a, not to a norris trophy i like that man yeah that's fucking sick now after talking all that good hockey we go back down to miami <laughs> The Florida it's, uh, Panthers. It's it's like thirty minutes out of Miami, apparently. <laughs> no one fucking cares where it's at. Uh, they went thirty-five, thirty-six, and eleven. Um, their GM was their coach. He's not their coach anymore. He's back to the GM. They no, have. Is he? No, he got fired, didn't he? Yeah. So it's Dale Talon. Oh yeah, it's Dale Talon at, at general manager, which I think is a good move. Uh, you know, his setting hand on the wheel will be will be good. I think since he did, I think he had you know his master plan pushed back probably three years. Whoa, 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 whoa! You definitely cannot say master plan. Ooh. <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking with you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> um, the only issue, or one of, one of the big issues I have with the upper management is uh, their coach, Bog or Bob Booner. Bob Booner. Uh, he was the <laughs> defensive coach for the Sharks for the last two years. Um, he's really good at utilizing. Uh, fast puck moving defenseman so you can expect uh, Ekblad and Yandel uh, and even like Mike Matheson who was a who was a rookie last year to have good to have good years especially with points but as we saw with the Sharks it sometimes leaves you know players out to dry if they make the wrong read or they don't you know come back as fast as they can yeah and so I think that this team there's going to be it's going to be kind of like the wild west shootout of of hockey. There's going to be a lot of scoring going both ways. <laughs> some of those games that Batman will be excited to see some of those fucking eight to nines and shit like that. <laughs> like the Dallas stars this year. Yeah. Oh fuck dude. I'm, I'm excited to see Dallas, man. I think they're going to be good. I just, I, ben I, Bishop was such a good move and Mark the thought too. I don't see how they're not good. Radulov man. Oh, on the top six. Oh also, shit. Like, to just, I think it was like just around six million too. It's fucking incredible. Oh, uh, um, and I think so, they had a good draft too. Oh yeah. Well, my my biggest, I guess, favorite or my favorite thing about Dallas is actually their upcoming defenseman, just uh, Julius Honka, and then Miro Heiskanen too. But I don't know much about Miro Heiskanen. Julius Honka, I've watched in the AHL for the last two years, and he's been in, impeccable. I think he was the steal of that Connor McDavid draft. Okay. He's he's so good. He's such a Fast puck moving uh, defenseman. He's very much. He very much reminds me of uh, John Klingberg in in Dallas. But imagine John Klingberg with much better defensive skills. I'd, I'd like to imagine that. Yeah, I think Dallas is going to do very well, especially with the emergence of their young defenseman. Uh, and then yeah, Radulov on that second or first line with Jamie Benn is going to be immaculate. It's, it, they should be a. I, I imagine uh, my center ice will be on Dallas games <laughs> quite, quite a bit this year, man. Oh yeah. Okay, so besides this, the, the core, but we, it's hard to talk about Florida, dude. Uh, it is. Besides that core, um, and, you know, Keith Yandel, I, I, you got to love Keith Yandel, fucking good American dude. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you heard the latest Spitting Chicklets, but he fucking killed it on there. He was amazing. Oh, I didn't hear that yet. Uh, That's cool. It's good to know. 
Yeah. Um, what, 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 what can they do? What I, I have them dead fucking last. Um, I have them over, uh, the Red Wings because I'm not really sure what to make of the Red Wings. Uh, I, I really like, I'm not to get too much of the Red Wings, but I really like Peter Mrazek as their goalie of the future. And they just tried to chase him off. I think talk about how he has a shitty attitude. I think something happened in his personal life last year, man. I yeah, think he didn't. He didn't look good, but who looked good on that team besides like Andres uh, Anastasio? Uh, Mantha. Anthony, oh, Mantha, that, dude, Mantha uh, is a fucking stud. I, 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 uh, I love power forwards like that. Fuck yeah, dude! And he, like, he's he's ready to drop him. And he's going to fucking fight your ass while you're laying on the ice, dude. You're going to have to peel him off your corpse. That's what I like about him, dude. He's got fucking kill blood in him. He reminds me of like uh, – I mean like – I mean obviously he can't fucking fight like Probert, but he he would like to think he can play like that. And I, I appreciate that shit. Yeah. I mean I – again, I you know love all the old fighters. But if he can drop, you know, if he, I my favorite power forwards and fighters of all time were Owen Nolan and uh, and Brendan Shanahan, where they both put up over two hundred penalty minutes and over a hundred points in the same season. If oh. he can, you know, 50, 50 penalty minutes and uh, fifty or yeah, fifty penalty minutes, like thirty goals in a season, I'll be very happy with that. Fuck yeah, I I, I think we need to see it. I would love to see it. So yeah. the Panthers, uh, but I, mean, yeah, I, I have them finishing around the last. I yeah, they're, right they're, they're, they're right, right around the bottom fucking. And we got it. Uh, you know, they don't sign Yager. Is anybody going to give that man a fucking job? I'm really surprised that no one has. I mean, just, you know, 48 points in the NHL is very good. I, He's Yamir Yager. Yeah. I I originally had Las Vegas kind of given him that deal since they had the cap space. Dude, it would have been awesome. Supposedly, he doesn't want to go back to Vegas because he's had some you know, Michael Jordan-like issues there. Oh, gamb- or banging young sluts or gambling? Both. Good. Go to fucking Vegas, dude. Maybe <laughs> fucking rejuvenate him, dude. Start getting all that young fucking trim, and then he's just scoring like fucking 60 goals again. Well, so I don't know if, you, I don't know if you've heard this, I guess, conspiracy, but remember in like the late 90s or whatever, Michael Jordan left the NBA because, you know, because he wanted to try something new. Oh, uh, no, his gambling and- problems. That's what got his dad murdered. Yeah, and he had to take some personal time. So apparently, when Yammer Jagger left the league to go to the KHL, oh shit, he like he he had some, or it was suspected that he had issues with like organizing like a in league gambling ring. Holy shit! I, which would really compromise NHL. Like that's almost like Pete Rose, like kind of bad. Like that stuff that would get him banned from hockey, and to have you know what is now the second leading scorer of all time banned from hockey that. You can't let that happen. Dude, I fucking believe it because he just left for no real good reason. Yeah. And the best part is he bought the KHL team that he was at. He went and played there for like a month and a half and was like, oh, fuck this. He I'm fucking bought. Oh, dude. That, he did it. Yeah. He, he still owns it to this day. It's, it's great. Does he really? It's fantastic. Yeah. Dude, that's, that's for him. We'll, that's where he'll go play if he doesn't make an NHL team. Dude, he if he wants to play in the NHL, someone fucking sign him and make the money off the dude. You're gonna make like, you're gonna make that back in fucking jerseys and ticket sales, dude. I wonder I wonder how much he's asking for because I, I don't know, and I would love to see. What would you think? You, he's asking probably what for a one year deal. Mm-hmm. Well, he made four point five million last year. I pay he him four forty five points. I'd probably say he's looking for something in the range of like three point five to four. I'd pay I'd him probably, four. I wouldn't I'd pay him a dollar over four, but I'd pay him four. Yeah, I'd four at the highest. But if I was like a Stanley Cup contender team and I wanted some more skill on that like third, you know, that third pairing or just like second pairing, especially someone that can contribute on uh, the power play, I would. You know, that's an easy that's an easy hire. But again, most cap or most playoff teams, most contending teams don't have the three point five million dollars right. to give him. I would like to see him go back to Pittsburgh and just call it a day. That would be nice, especially if they're going to Philly, which made no sense to me. But that was fucked up. That was, was fucked up. It was a little funny, but it was fucked up. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure okay. it's funny for us, but I'm sure people in Pittsburgh were like, ah! yeah. uh, Georgie, dude, this was amazing, man. Thank you so much for fucking doing quadruple, uh, you know, deal here and knocking these four fucking teams out for me, man. 
Uh, let the Biscuit Babies know where they can find you. I know on Twitter it's George M one zero one nine. Then uh, mm-hmm. the podcast is podcast B T P. Yep, Between the Pipes podcast uh, on iTunes and SoundCloud. And I just uh, started writing for a website called Roto Den. I have a piece coming out tomorrow on the worst NHL contracts uh, for each team currently. So check that out. Now, what's Roto? Roto what's Roto Den? It's a new blog site that uh, they're right. They're you know they have a lot of they're very well based in uh, in like NBA and NFL, but they're looking for hockey writers. So if anyone is a young aspiring hockey writer, give them a DM or find them online. Hell yeah, man! That's fucking fantastic. All right, Biscuit Babies, that was uh, George. I cannot pronounce his uh, last name again because I've had five Labats. Uh, dude, what a great podcast. Um, I'd like to thank him again. That was amazing. <laughs> Nashville's done. San Jose's done. Tampa Bay's done. Florida Panthers, done. I'm going to get all fucking 31 of these teams, and you fuckers are going to help me. If you guys are interested, DM me. Not not DP me. DM me. Uh, Biscuit Podcast. The Biscuit Pod at Twitter. <clears throat> Let me know what team you want to cover, and I'll see if they've been picked. I'll actually have the list up uh, later tonight when I do the, the uh, Blackhawks podcast with my man Gatekeeper from the Blackhawks Shoutcast, a.k.a. Puckin' Hostile. Are you guys not fucking rating and reviewing the podcast on iTunes? Go do it, please. <sighs> email me. Biscuitpodcast at gmail.com. I don't know. Don't email me. We don't We don't need to email me. That's just Twitter. That's what we do. We Twitter. Twitter's fun. Stitcher Radio. Google Play Music. Um... Not Spotify because uh, they don't like the way that I talk. Um, I say racism. You say racism. Spotify's racist. I said it. You heard it. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. What am I, floating in a bunch of salt water? No. But I could be because I could go to Lucid Float Spas and float my fucking ass off. And feel better than I've ever felt in my fucking life. And maybe I will. And maybe when I go there, I'll tell Chad, Hey, Chad, I listened to The Biscuit. Can I have my first float for $30? And he'll say, Yeah, dude, you can. The Biscuit. You got it. You're welcome. Parker's Platoon. Go get a bracelet. Go get a jersey. Don't be a fuck. Coast to Coast Hockey Apparel. Oh, so you don't love super comfortable shirts that look badass and talk shit about people? Don't be a pussy. Go buy a shirt. Shitty coolers. Would you like 10% off of a shitty cooler purchase? Well, at checkout, type in shitty days. S-H-I-T-I-D-A-Y-S. Shitty days at checkout. 10% 10% off shittycoolers.com. Thanks, guys. I love you very much. Um, thank you for listening. If there's anything I can do for you guys, let me know. All right. Freedom. Hockey. The Biscuit.